Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, this is the third session of Fridays with Anne. Here we are again with Anne Favake. Hello, Anne. Hello, Joost. <laughs> Good to have you again. We will um, connect right to the previous session where we talked about uh, the idea of dimensions. This is another step of case in case analysis, and um, which is based on the vital information that we get through the case taking. So I was wondering, based on the vital information that needs, uh, that we need to be sure therefore that the information that we base our analysis on is vital exactly how can we do that <laughs> how can we do that uh, it's a it's a very logical question as we started out talking about uh, animal cases it's like already um, uh, known for sure that we have vital information so from there from kingdom how to determine sub-kingdoms and species in an animal kingdom. We went to, yes, but there is a, a, an even earlier differentiation you can make according to the dimensions, but still this is also based on uh, uh, vital information and also context. The context mm -hmm. of the conversation of your an anamnesis will help you out a little bit. But mm -hmm. the, the main question is, before you know before you can analyze into kingdoms, kingdoms and, and also miasms mostly, you have to be sure the information is vital. And the, the difficulty usually is in differentiating between vital and story, the story that the patient tells you, and his personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his personality will show in the anamnesis, he will express his way of being by his personality and he will express or tell you, share his life story or his uh, stories with difficulties and complaints with you. But what is vital and what belongs to the story and is not a basis for prescription, what belongs to the personality and is not a basis to, for prescription. That's the thing. The uh -huh, uh -huh. So you're differentiating basically all the material, the information we get in a consultation, you can put into three categories, then that would be the story, the personality, and vital information, is that right? Yes, there's, there's more. There's, of course, the physical uh, information and there's the information from the second level, which is the energy level. So we mm -hmm. get information from all levels. But the difficulty is usually not on the physical or in, on the energy level, which is the body part of, this, mm -hmm. of the whole patient. Mm -hmm. In the mind part, we have emotions, we have the psyche, and we have this strange thing beyond that we try right. to find words for. And mm -hmm. on this beyond thing, this vital level, there is the source of the disturbance. Yeah. And it's, we already discussed how difficult it is to make the patient verbalize this. Right. Yeah. So we're just now talking about this specific area. We're not, we're leaving out the other levels, so to say. We're yeah. talking when we think we have something strange, rare, peculiar, mm -hmm. and we think this is vital, how can we know? that it is vital and not the story that uh, a story of the patient or that it does not belong to the personality of the patient that would be the the question right indeed that's the question and especially because before let's say sensation um, was uh, this 
discovered or, or, or uh, described, we used to analyze according to drug pictures. And the drug pictures were a mixture of all kinds of information from all kinds of levels. Mm -hmm. And we have these portraits we were very, who, um, which were very useful mm -hmm. in, when we studied homeopathy in the 80s because we saw instead of a, a bunch of rubrics, we saw a, a person, a personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are trained to see personalities and then later we have to let go of them because the personality mm -hmm. is one possible and maybe likely expression of a certain state and the state comes from the vital that's mm -hmm. the way the person perceives himself and the world and it's unaware he's unaware of it it's unconscious it's mm -hmm. just his way of doing and being you never really question yourself because that's the way you are and most people don't even realize there are other ways to be yeah. they might consider other ways to think mm -hmm. of other ideas but not other ways of being but we especially we, for very central things they believe everybody just feels or thinks the way they do yes yes like mm -hmm. human and of course we all share human traits that's clear mm -hmm. and we all have a personality also yeah mm -hmm. but we don't prescribe on it and that's a difficulty in in the many master classes that i gave and i, I always think the the best um situation to explain is when you have a life case in front of mm -hmm. you and the, the the students the homeopaths could be there and witness how the patient behaved what the patient tell in what <coughs> way the information came to you all this theory i'm trying to to share as a help and then in our analysis like this the discern this is personality and this is not that's the difficulty and mm -hmm. what i can say about personality is it's the sum of all the um, aspects of the social and the cultural background of the patient that means the country you born in in that particular country um, mm -hmm. the, let's say the, the, the social environment, eh, the, the, the status of the family you're born in or the neighborhood you are born in, it's also your IQ. It, it makes a difference uh, for your personality, whether you have a very yeah. high or a rather low IQ, but it doesn't make yeah. a difference for the states. It, you don't have intelligent no states now. <laughs> no yes yeah. so that's but what is what is what is state because state is a is a thing that you haven't mentioned before then we need to define first what you mean you're by right. state i would say the state is the vital mm -hmm. that's the way you are the way you are in and in and the world you live in hmm? right mm -hmm. yeah. your individual world you live in so the iq doesn't belong to that because mm -hmm. you can have the same state let's say you you need an ozone you yeah. can have an intelligent ozone and a not so intelligent ozone and both mm -hmm. of them are still in an ozone state so that belongs to the personality because in the personality it will make a, a lot of difference yeah and so in your family constellation also the i mean the place you have in the family whether you're a girl or a boy whether you're the first born or the, you know the sixth in the family that will make a difference yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm even with the same parents it will make a difference and also the family history hmm? let's say the, the the people are immigrants or, or the people you, your grandparents uh, um, were in the war or something you are also part of this family history hmm? that mm -hmm. will somehow be reflected on you of course gender <laughs> it plays a role yeah. it, it makes a difference whether you're girl or boy uh, and and also your biography, the things that you live through. That means your, the character, the personality of your parents will also mm -hmm. um, put this stamp on you, the way you are educated. Yeah. 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 That makes a difference. That, that's your personal biography, but that will also form your personality. Mm -hmm. So the, the best way I can put it is 
if you have um, in your garden you have a, a carrot seed and, and so you, you sow your carrot seeds in your garden and you, you nurture it very well the, the soil is very fertile and you give it lots of water and it's in, in, in the sun and the temperature is ideal you will have nice big beautiful tasty carrot and on the contrary when your carrot is you know in, in a, a poor soil somewhere in, in a dark corner of your garden and you never look at it you, you neglect it and you will have like little crooked uh, um, maybe uh, worm, uh, worms in, in your carrots and they will not be so tasty but it will be a carrot mm -hmm. so the, the carrot is the vital and you could the say carrot the, is the, vital. <laughs> the carrot is our substance that we're looking for yes Yes, they will never grow a, a cauliflower out of your carrot seed, no matter mm -hmm. how you raise it. But whether it's raised with in um, good circumstances, ideal circumstances, or in very bad circumstances, will determine the results. Mm -hmm. So they will they will look different and taste different eh? and express mm -hmm. different, but that's the personality. So that's the personality. Um, could we say that the personality is then um, all the things that we could explain psychologically, maybe? Psychologically and from understanding the story and the, and the family story and, of course... The, the it goes beyond psychology, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Understanding yeah. the circumstances. The mm -hmm. circumstances, the context of the patient, the situation he is in, the things he went through, then you will understand. Mm -hmm. It starts in the very first minute when you ask, of course you see the patient so you don't have to ask the gender, but when you ask, are you married, are you divorced, what is your profession, it starts already there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because then plop, you have an idea. Oh, I have a businessman in front of me. Oh, I have a saleswoman in front of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then the, the person will add to that picture. Yeah. So this is my situation, that is where I grew up, and the way that um, he or she will express, you will, you will notice whether the patient is intelligent or well-educated or, or more unfortunate and had to work at a very early age and etc. etc. So that will all like build up this uh, personality from which you can understand a lot of psychology. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the personality. What is then the story in contrast? Well, then this person will tell you the stories. And the mm -hmm. stories is uh, a part of this biography. This is what I went through in childhood. This, that, that happened or, you know, I'm divorced and this and that happened. It mainly, let's say, to generalize it, it's the, the, the theater. Uh, uh, where the patient experiences the issues mm -hmm. yeah. and the issues is why he comes yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the, the main reason uh, why he visits you um, so unless the patient uh, only sees us for physical reasons uh, he will be aware that we are holistic uh, healers and we want to know the whole person we want to know mm -hmm. who is sitting in front of us with the problem not only like narrowing our vision down to the problem only so the patient will tell about himself that's the story uh -huh. Uh -huh. so the story okay now let's go first then how do we know then it's it's vital or what uh, there, there must be fine nuances because otherwise it would be easy right otherwise it would be easy now the story is sometimes um confusing for homeopaths and they tend to prescribe on the story <coughs> and also that's because there's information out there eh? the, the, the the platform the theater on which the patient experiences issues that's a story and mm -hmm. very often that's about work that's about family and that's about relationships because these are the issues or these are the the arenas we all have in our life eh? yeah and very often that is where almost always that's where the problem is concentrated mm -hmm. 
but we shouldn't prescribe on this simple fact. We shouldn't prescribe on the arena. Actually, to know what is vital, we have to like strip the whole story and see what remains. And also strip the personality and see what remains. And then we have the vital information. And I know this is easily said than done. Mm -hmm. But everything that in the story is like human, it's common. We all share it. We all have family. Okay. But of course, our relationships in the family are different, are very different. And our experience of these happenings are individual. That's vital. Mm -hmm. And the best um, inner guidance is your surprise. Uh, okay. Yeah. Where you ask yourself, huh? That's a funny way to react. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something unexpected, okay? Yeah, every time you understand the story, you think, yes, of course, I can see that. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's logical, it's appropriate, it's a proportion. Eh? Even if it's a bit uh, extreme, still, if you can understand it, it's normal, it's common. Yeah. It's not the basis mm -hmm. for prescription. It only becomes yeah. the basis for prescription when you think, what? <laughs> when you're surprised. Would you say, would you say that this happens in every case? Mm. I think for a long time because I think maybe there are exceptions, but I, I can't think of any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. my first answer would be, yeah, I expect this, huh, this surprise to come in every case. But yes, but it's subtle. And when people talk a lot, for instance, plant cases eh, or animal cases, and you have, especially plant cases, you have pages and pages and pages that you scribble down trying to follow the, all the stories. Yeah. Then it can um, escape your attention, this little, because it's not big surprises, it's like little surprises. And sometimes you're only surprised because you heard something for the third time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you think now like, this comes up again and again. That's a little bit strange because now we yeah. have three or four or five stories and the same thing keeps coming up. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a very good pointer. Then you can almost, almost forget about the story and only take this, this what is left, your little surprise of mm, this seems to be unusual. Then I can say it belongs to the patient and not to the story. Mm -hmm. So everything that belongs to the story, you can disregard as a basis for prescription. Everything that belongs to the personality, you can disregard. Right, yeah, I understand the theory. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, one thing would be, because I could give a, a, a while you were uh, explaining it a bit more, I was thinking of an example for, um, when last time we spoke also about compensated uh, animals and how we change over over our childhood and so on and how compensation gets stronger and ch children are less compensated and I was thinking of a child for example um, for example comparing themselves to others mm -hmm. that would be for us normally a typical pointer to animal kingdom mm -hmm. but in children not so much because you said that in school comparison and so on uh, is normal and it's everybody gets graded and everybody wants to know what grade did you get and what clothes do you wear and uh, how good are you at sports and all this so there it is not um reliable if it's just mentioned there you know it's not something to to jump at but it could also be that it is actually an animal case in a child and there it would be quite, uh, it would go into subtleties, no? To Always. The homeopathy mm -hmm. is a very sophisticated healing system mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's always subtle. Uh, but the example you gave is very good. So you said in, in a child or in a puber, it would be normal to compare yourself. To your peers because then it's a period that's very important 
um, to have a lot of friends, to be popular, because you don't have your identity um, firmly established yet. So you are a little bit in doubt, and especially between childhood and adolescence. You, you mean you are this in this stage between these two chairs that you don't even know who you are, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is all normal. We all <laughs> go through through this period of time. It's it's mm -hmm. a development. So you have to then more or less um, um, define for yourself what is normal in in this particular child of puber, uh, with this with this culture and social backgrounds, and even with this race, because there can be difficulties um, yeah. uh, or differences and expectations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a boy should behave like this, and a girl should behave like that. That can yeah. be a difference in, 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 in different communities even. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So all these things you have to take into consideration, like, for this child in this school, in this area, eh, in the countryside or, or in a big town, in this particular social environment, what is normal? What is common? What can you expect? And all that goes out the window. That is not the basis of prescription, <laughs> only what is left. Yeah. And if he's yeah. comparing, and all the children com are comparing, that's mm -hmm. normal. But he can be exaggerating you can even in the thing that is normal be on the extreme mm -hmm. and, then it, and then it becomes uh an um, how do you say it becomes a symptom yeah mm -hmm. i see this directly leads to the other question that i had in mind in order to understand now to separate all this personality from the vital or the other way around we need to see the unusual and to see the unusual we need to know what is usual so it sounds like <clears throat> we need to have a very vast knowledge of all the usualities if that yeah. is the word of um, sociology psychology um, regional habits or uh, <laughs> customs um, cultural things like you say gender roles and all these things and the gender roles in their context and so on mm -hmm. and then for every particular person uh, apply individually what are the these um, background information things and we put these personality puzzle together mm -hmm. and then we can see what is left and mm -hmm. that could be vital then yes <laughs> yeah, you put it very well. Yeah, you, you know, we talked before, and I usually call this common sense. And I then, know, I know. <laughs> and then you reply, I what you with, call. <laughs> I wonder with, with, with which people you hang out, but okay. Yeah, I know. So to, for me, it, it, it seems... It seems that way that you have to use your common sense, and you because it's impossible to know everything. Uh, we cannot be, although we try, be specialists in everything. Yeah? But homeopaths mm -hmm. have very big demands on themselves, and yeah. mm -hmm. of course, you're right. The more you you know of these areas, it will be helpful. But you you cannot be specialist in everything. So, what you have to let's say as a minimum uh, requirement have to at least know about or master is and we think this normal for the physical level it's like we, we study anatomy physiology pathology so you have to have a, a basic knowledge of how the body functions right mm -hmm. we think that's normal mm -hmm. what is normal functioning and what is pathological functioning where is out of the normal and we have to have some idea of pathology like if you have diabetes then you can expect this that and the other symptom or when you have this that and the other symptom it might point to this particular disease hmm? yeah. mm -hmm. this is applies to the mind as well for the body we think it's normal we have to have some medical background at least mm -hmm. able to to know what is strange and peculiar mm -hmm. if it's the same I will tell about the mind in a, in a minute, but if yeah. you have 
if you want to prescribe on the vital information, it's on all levels. I keep shouting, you know, <laughs> the vital is all levels all of the time. There's no way your patient can hide the vital information from you because it's in his individuality. So also on level one, level two, which is the body, we will, we will have the vital information mm -hmm. in, the, in the physical symptoms. But to discern vital from common, we have to know what is common. Yeah. So let's say migraine, a person comes with migraine. Mm -hmm. We should have an idea in order to, to be able to prescribe what can you expect with migraine. Mm -hmm. And if a patient says I'm photophobic and I feel nauseous and, and it, I, it hurts a lot and mostly it's one-sided, etc. We know that's all. That's migraine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when a person says, um, for instance, I recall a patient who said, oh, my headache is so bad. Oh, it's so bad. The only thing I can do is like, oh, I want to sit down or stand and lean my head against something. And I said, what, how do mm -hmm. you exactly do this? So I made him stand up mm -hmm. and show it in public for all the students. Like he would like slowly, slowly move to the wall and then very softly put his head against the wall. And that would be the only thing that would improve him. And if this chair was like high enough, he would just lean back with his head. Oh. And that was the only thing that would improve. <laughs> now that that doesn't belong to migraine. That doesn't migraine. No. How yeah. often do you hear a person with migraine prescribing, describing precisely what he mm. needs to do in order to be able to stand it? And yeah, and that is not surprisingly a rubric. And the rubric is not surprisingly his his remedy because it's right, yeah. so clearly. By the way, it's bromium. It's so clearly expressed mm -hmm. in his very particular symptom okay. that you can trust it. And the same thing applies to the mind. I understand. I understand the theory there. The same applies to the mind. Mm -hmm. And this is also what Shankaran um, tells in his, in his little course book that he recently published uh, or a while ago. Again, the, the search for this peculiar physical symptom also and keep inquiring, keep questioning the patient until, until you get uh, this, this funny symptom. And I, to me, it feels easier to find these uh, peculiar, out of the ordinary symptoms, vital symptoms on the physical level than on the mental emotional level because the, the, I, the, the for the, to separate the personality and the story, like like you said, um, this is n these are not so hard facts. These are not so so clearly defined. What are social standards or what are because these also vary from person to person. Yes, and we um, how to say we have to make interpretations, and so we yeah. can we can. Um, uh, have different ideas about it but mm. unfortunately the hard facts that we would like to rely on on the physical level are very rare I mean mm. the, most of our patients have um, vague symptoms chronic suffering mm. um, a lot of suffering on level two I gave you an example eh, that had um, and that is why I recall it so well, that yeah. had this particular outspoken symptom with only six remedies, you know. Right, yes. Yeah. But most of the time when a patient comes with, you know, on the energy level, level two, functional mm -hmm. problems, pain is mm -hmm. a functional problem, or uh, hormonal imbalances, um, or energy problems, you know, burnout, uh, chronic fatigue, whatnot, <laughs> digestive problems. You mm -hmm. rarely get those very specific symptoms. You get most of the time this syndrome. Syndromes, irritable bowel or irritable bladder, or I don't know what, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then you have all these vague complaints, and in every rubric that you will look, you will find 550 remedies. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunate. When you have them, they're reliable and they point to a remedy and mostly a vital one. But unfortunately, it's kind of rare. The, most of our patients will express themselves 
more individually on the mind level than on the body yeah. level. It is yeah. possible, but it's um, strange, uh, or let's say it's more rare. Although, not, not longer than last week, a person came in and, uh, you know, the, ready I, the remedy I had ready for her was Pereira Brava, which is one of the mini spermiacea, which is mm -hmm. very close to the ranunculacea. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you have ranuncle in mind, then you, you're very close. And one of the first things the patient said, I have this, this, and the other, you know, I always somatize my problems. Oh, that's a good mm -hmm. one. That mm -hmm. means on level two generalities, she gives vital information. Mm -hmm. I always somatize my problem, which is almost a direct pointer to running Classea. That's what they do. They somatize emotional problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. But then on the mind level, our patients express more individual and we have to individualize as much as possible. And it's mm -hmm. in general more difficult to be very individual on the physical level. Mm -hmm. But I heard a homeopath once said in a seminar, if you can recognize a remedy only from seeing the big toe, it's great. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, I have more questions for future um, conversations. Um, also, uh, going into this whole vital sensation, vital disturbance question, what is really sensation and disturbance? How would you define these? And there are more. Mm -hmm. But for today, this is it. And I thank you very much, as usual. Very insightful. Always my pleasure. <laughs> And I look forward to the next time. Me too. See you. See Bye you then, Anna. Bye. Bye.